Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second stream of Your Head in the Cloud. I'm here today with Zoe. She's an amazing photographer, and we're going to talk a little about, bit about dodge and burn, which is a really cool technique in Photoshop. Hello, Zoe, and thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Sophia. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. I'm really happy to have you. And would you like to introduce yourself real quick to the people that don't know you? Sure. So I am a photographer that specializes mainly in beauty and still life. Um, I've shot for clients like L'Oreal Paris, um, Vichy, and um, had my work published in magazines like Vogue and Elle. But I never, um, I, I haven't always been a photographer. I actually was a web designer um, about eight years ago and bought a camera when I moved from London to Berlin and fell in love basically and spent um, a year or two learning everything I could about uh, photography and retouching and managed to change my life and my career. So I'm yeah. really happy to kind of give back and, you know, I do tutorials and education because I am here today because of the generosity of other people sharing their knowledge. So I want to give back to people as well. That's really cool because um, funny thing about how I found out about Zoe is that I actually watched one of her tutorials on YouTube. This is how I learned. So I'm a big fan of your work. I'm a big fan of your tutorials. And where can people find you and your work if they want to know more and find out more about your stuff? So my, my portfolio site is zoenoble.com. And I also have an education site, which is coming soon. But you can sign up to my newsletter while you wait, um, where I give tips and tutorials there. So that is zoenoble.education. And you can find me on social media at zoenophoto. Okay, we have all of these links also in the description if you wanna check those out. And let's get started. Let's open up Photoshop. Okay, so you can see my screen, yeah? Okay. Yes. So so the, the reason why I wanted to do this dodge and burn technique um, is because it's a really important technique for both photographers and retouchers to learn. Um, I mean, it's a really old technique as well. It's, it's from the, the old days um, when we would print photos and uh, during the printing process, we would actually manipulate the exposure, uh, making areas lighter and darker. Um, so we've transported that technique into the digital world and we use this um, to not only add depth, but we also use it to smooth transition. So here we can see um, our model has some areas which have you know, kind of darker and lighter areas, um, blemishes and under the eyes. So we use this technique to basically um, smooth those transitions. Another reason I really love this technique is it is non-destructive. So I can use this and not affect the skin texture, the skin texture, apologies. So, you know, I can pull back the effect later down the line, um, but, but it's great. It, it means I am, you know, maintaining as much control as possible. And when it comes to retouching, that is what I want. So the first thing um, we will do is add a new curves adjustment. So I'm gonna come up to my layer and I'm gonna go down to new adjustment layer and select curves. So I'm going to press OK. So over here in our curves adjustment, what the curve is representing is the tonal range of our image. So down in the left corner, we have the darker areas of our photos. In the middle, we have the midtones, And in the top right, we have the brighter areas and the highlights. So if I add a control point in the middle and I lift this up, I'm, I'm basically brightening the, the image. I'm brightening in, in the specific area of the mid-tones. If I drop this down, I'm darkening my image. 
So we can really manipulate the exposure of the image by using this technique. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise up my curve to somewhere around here. And I'm going to now come over to the layer and I'm gonna use this as the dodge layer. So I wanna make sure I'm selected on my layer mask and using Command or Control I, I'm gonna invert that layer mask. So now this adjustment is hidden, so I can't see it. So I'm gonna keep everything nice and organized. So I will oop, right dodge. And now I wanna create my burn layer. So let's go back up to the layers and new adjustment layer and select the curves. So I wanna do the opposite for this now. I want to add a control point and bring down the curve. So now I'm gonna be darkening the exposure of my photo. So again, I'm gonna press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask and I'm gonna write Burn. So this technique, it takes time to master. It's not you just start doing this and you're perfect at it. Sadly, it takes a bit of time and you can do a few things to help. So to get remove the distractions, we can remove the color on the photo. So I can do this by going down to choose one of the adjustment layers here and I'm gonna select solid color. Now I wanna set this to black and then I will go over to my blending modes and go down to color. So this is basically removing all of the color. So I can now see the dark and the light areas much more clearly than if I have this turned off. So when you're starting and you're um, beginning to learn this technique, use this eye help, I call it an eye help, so that you can really see those areas a lot easier. So I'm gonna call this help. Yeah, I usually do it with like just the black and white layer. Would that work too? Like just put one black and white layer on top of the photo? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, let me just double check. There are, there's a few, like in Photoshop, we know there's many different ways oh, yeah. to achieve the same result, but there are some ways of getting to black and white that you shouldn't use. Um, but I'm just going to do this. So you use the, the black and white. Yes. So let's just test this out. So if we go to black and white, so that is exactly the same. Okay. So what you what <laughs> you do? <don't, laughs> so what you don't want to do is um, use a hue saturation and pull mm. down the saturation. Um, so uh, yeah, basically solid color set to black, and then blending mode color or the the black and white. Yeah. So. Yes. And, and I completely agree. Like it took me a long time in the beginning. I was like, I don't see anything. It's not working. Why is this not working? And I think it's like with so many tools, especially with retouching, you have to learn to see it with your eyes. Like it takes time to get used to it and also be subtle with it and not overdo it. Cause I'm also um, guilty of overdoing it and then being disappointed. So it's something <laughs> you have to really fine tune, but it's so worth it. So I'm you, you super do. happy. And it's one of those techni techniques that it's not just used for beauty photos. I use this for all types of photography. So when I am working on product photos or still life photos, you know, it's a technique that can be used for all, you know, landscape, portrait, everything, because it's, you know, it's just creating that depth. If you want to, ha to have more depth, you can darken the dark areas or lighten the light areas. And that's all contrast is just the, the 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 difference between those highlights and the the shadows so the more you kind of stretch those and you pull that and you get your brighter areas brighter and your darker areas darker you get more contrast and you get more depth and the reverse is also true so if you do the opposite um you also will uh, reduce the depth so this technique you have to kind of learn it because you can use it for so many different areas so persevere people persevere um, so if I just talk about the brush settings, um, there is no real complicated brushes that we need for this technique. I use a big round soft brush. So I'm just gonna make sure I have my soft round brush selected and we have and make sure I choose my brush tool um, in the panel. So there are a few different ways that we can uh, work with this tool. We can either, um, we can play with the opacity and the flow. And this is a very personal choice. When I first started learning this technique, I would actually have my flow set much lower, maybe mm -hmm. one or 2% and my opacity set to 100%. Now I've switched oh. it. 
Now I have my flow set to 100% and I work between somewhere like 3% to 15% in the opacity, depending on the area, because we're working on lots of different images. This will always depend on the image and the area that you're working in. Um, so for me, the opacity, altering the opacity gives me more control because let me do a little quick example. If I create a blank layer and let me just oh, set this to black. So now with my brush tool selected and I'll paint with white and let's increase the brush. So if I have a low opacity and a high flow, it, as long as I don't keep up and let, let me undo that, let me do this higher so you can definitely see this. So as long as I don't lift up my brush, I'm only painting that amount of opacity that paint wants. So I can go over the area again and again and again, and I'm not going to increase that, that area. So if I, nice. lift up my, if I lift up my brush now and I press again, now I'm adding more onto there. So the difference with the other technique where you have your flow set to low mm -hmm. and your opacity set higher, if I start brushing, you can see I have, I'm not lifting up my mouse, but you see all of these little areas that are getting stronger and stronger because the flow is constantly coming out of the brush. So to me, it is a personal preference, but to me, so, so I prefer this method using the opacity as the lower, because I, I know if I keep my brush down on this area, I will always have this amount of paint coming out. So, but try both techniques because it's amazing how each of us need different ways of working. And actually some people, I know big retouchers who use the other way. So try both, try both. Yeah, because I think I try, I'm, I have to really think about because I, I have a set setup that I just use usually, but I think I'm doing it the other way around. I don't know why, but now it makes total sense. I think I haven't even really thought about this, but I'm totally going to try it out to, to, to switch the two. Do it because really cool. I, I think the tutorial that I have on my YouTube channel, you know, this was maybe four years ago. I had it the other way using the flow. And, you know, this is what happens. We learn, we learn different techniques we progress and we find a better way of working. So, you know, try both ways and see what works best for you. You know, yeah. there's no right and wrong, right or wrong. A lot of the times when we're retouching, it's about using the techniques and seeing what works for us. So try yeah. both. And also great that it feels like you never stop learning and exploring. Like we can still keep on learning new things about Photoshop, new ways to to make photos better. I think that's great. That's amazing. Oh, absolutely. You know, when I look back at photos I retouched at the beginning, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, um, I, I retouched way too much. And this is something we all do. You 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 learn the techniques, but you don't train your eye and you don't know what to leave and what to remove. So it it makes sense. The more you do this, the more you train your eye to to see what you can leave and what you can remove, to not be so heavy handed. And my goal with retouching and educating others is, you know, use a lighter touch. You don't need to remove as much as you think you do as well. We have a lot of tutorials, you know, on, on platforms that sadly they put out wrong information. And if you don't know any better, you learn those techniques and you keep using them. So, you know, I now have you know, built up my skills and knowledge over the last 10 or so, uh, eight years. And I now know less is more and you don't need to remove as much. So, yeah, I think that's also really nice on, on Photoshop, because if I realize I've done too much and I've gone too far, you that I just usually lower the opacity off the layer itself. So you can always like take a step back and be like, oops, that, mm, that mm, was a bit too much. Exactly. And that's the great thing with dodge and burn. It's non-destructive. So I can reduce my, my layer, the opacity of the layer. So, you know, you can do that. And at the beginning, I also did that. Now I find that I've trained my eye well enough that, okay, I don't need to do that. But yes, doing that is not a problem as well. So let's get going then. So I'm going to, you know, zoom in a little bit, but do, do not zoom in so close when you're doing this technique. Always retouch with the intended output. So that means if this photo is only going to be used online or on my portfolio, on Instagram, I don't need to go into this layer, this level. 
I don't need to do that. I'm, I'm wasting time and um, the photo will look over retouched. If you remove all of these tiny elements, it will look too retouched. So if this image is for online and I know only it's only ever gonna be seen maybe at this kind of level, I don't need to really go in that much closer. So yeah. I, can, I can even start out here and I'm just going to go over those areas and I'm not, I'm, I'm not actually being so careful because using the opacity, I know if I push down once, it's only going to come out once and yeah. I, can re I can change my brush size, which I always want to um, make it fit the area that I'm working on. So using the square bracket keys, I can do this and just go in. And if I need to get in a bit closer, I can just zoom in. And I'm just gonna go over those darker areas. I'm, I'm using the dodge layer. So we can start to see the skin blemishes are being removed. And, you know, I haven't cleaned this image, which is the term I use when I'm talking about healing or clone stamping, removing. So, you know, during, there's a whole process when it comes to retouching. And one of the, the processes would be cleaning these blemishes. And you can decide, maybe you don't need to remove these blemishes um, because actually all it is is a, a transition that could a light transition that could be smoothed so lighting the dark areas and darkening the light areas so you know if i wanted to you know just do this technique on here i can do that and so let me just turn off this layer so we can see how this is removing those kind of darker spots on her skin now i can increase my brush size and just start working on the bigger areas so usually you would, as a first step, clean the skin and then you would do dodge and burn or what? what is your usual order of things? You know what? Sometimes I, I switch between both uh, because sometimes you just want to keep it, in, you just want to keep it interesting and mix things up. And there is no right or wrong. The only, the only reason why sometimes I find if you do dodge and burn first, you don't need to remove as much in the cleaning because if yeah. you go in and start looking at, okay, I could reduce, I could you know, take off uh, this and this and this, and then you are you are destroying the skin texture, um, which is, it's okay, but if you start removing everything, then it starts to look fake. So sometimes I'll, I'll do the dodge and burn first, and then my cleaning process is so much simpler and quicker because once I remove these distracting, um, sorry, let me do this. Once I remove these distracting elements, I don't need to remove every pore and everything i don't i don't need to to go that aggressive yeah i also really like i don't know about you but i really like skin texture and i think sometimes it's really sad if people like remove this completely and make it look like it's plastic almost i really like that dodge and burn gives you the opportunity to just keep the texture and just change the little things that you want to change absolutely i mean this is my goal in life is to educate others about natural retouching you know I, I I love editing and retouching my photos and it really saddens me when I see people ruin a, a, a great photo with over retouching and you know we should be trying to maintain believability you know this people should look like people um, I mean this is a you know a beauty photo so I don't want to remove every ounce of texture on her skin because then it's not going to feel real um, and I do see maybe a shift in the industry that natural retouching, I think is becoming more important. Um, yeah. we, we've, we've been so used to like the, the filtered faces and I do, I see agencies now, which, you know, they're about kind of no retouching. Obviously it's not no retouching, but it is that look, which is natural, you yeah. know, which I love. I really, love. I really like images where you don't even like, at at least sometimes I don't even know if it is retouched or not. And I really like that because that just shows that someone's done a really amazing job um, doing natural retouching. And I think your photos often, I really like the texture. I think your retouching is amazing. Like, thank you. You're so good at it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, the, the goal always with my retouching is that you can't tell if it's retouched, you know? Yes. So that's, that's always my goal. Um, and sometimes you need to take some time out and I'll go back to a photo the next day because you need to uh, give your eyes a rest when you're retouching. And then I could be like, okay, this looks too much. This looks too much. Pull back and reduce the layer of 
you know, the dodge layer or the burn layer um, and really pull it back. So it takes time to build that, uh, that skill, the eye, but sometimes yeah. it's going to break. So I'm just going to switch to the burn layer now. Yeah. Just so everyone can see that. I think that's also really important because especially when you do things that for you while you're doing it looks so small. Sometimes yeah. when I dodge and burn, I'm like, is anything happening in my uh, image? And then you just like, I, I think you did it before as well, like turn off the layer and just check. So yeah. to like reinsure yourself, I've done something because especially when the opacity is low or your flow is low, you can't see immediately what you're doing. It just takes a little bit of time. Excellent. And then I really like stepping back, zooming out, turning the layer on and off to just see your progress or just yeah. wait until the next day and just have a clear mind and start over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's when you're starting, it feels like, you know, I'm never going to be done. But now I can retouch a beauty photo in an hour if, it, if there's nothing crazy intensive with, say, hair and dodge and burn. I can do in 15 minutes. You know, it depends on it depends on the image. If it's an image that's for a commercial campaign and it's going to be a billboard. OK, that's going to take a lot more time because I'm going to be zoomed in to see every pore because I know it's going to be much bigger if it's a uh, smaller uh, output, I can do this very, very quickly because, you know, I can retouch at this level. I don't need to remove yeah. so much more. Um, yeah. And one thing to be mindful that I, I wanted to say is dodge and burn and you're changing the light. So you have to be mindful of bone structure and muscle structure. So, you know, under here, she has a bone and she has uh, the eye socket. And I, if I remove this under eye completely, it will look fake. She won't look real so always I'm always looking for areas like around her her lips here the bone down here around her cheek these are bones that should always be there so I am all I'm just going to lessen the transitions around that but I'm not removing the bone yeah. structure yeah I think that's something especially for beauty photographer and retoucher like understanding the structure of a face um, I mean, goes into the natural retouching. That's just like human are yes. humans are built like this. So you should not change that. And I no. really think that's no. important to understand. And, you know, it, it is it is um, overwhelming at the beginning. You're like, where's the bones and where, you know, so so get a, an anatomy book out and study where the bones are. Have a, you know, have a look where the bones are and look at, as well in magazines, high end magazines and look at the work of the retouchers there. Yeah. And, you know, that is your that's your ultimate goal, getting work in those kinds of magazines um, or for obviously for commercial clients. Or your goal could be to do this for for portraits um, where, you know, you don't want to remove every uh, pore and texture. You just want to be mindful that it's a portrait of a person. So you just want to lessen any kind. You want to make them look like they had a lovely night's sleep. Yeah, Absolutely. I think, can we see already what it would look like without the help layer to see a oh. bit of the difference? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that looks... So much better, right? So, so much better already. And I mean, I can, um, you know, here I would, I would remove, um, like here I could, I'm going to create a new layer and um, with my healing brush tool, I'm just going to press press down alt to select an area and I'm just going to go over that because I know I, I can't remove that big of a yeah. high area like a high light area um, with the dodge and burn so that's what I'm doing I'm kind of just looking for those areas that are impossible to remove with the dodge and burn um, so now I'm, I'm going back to my dodge layer and let's see if you start to see as well here you can see there are some shifts some color shifts and that's because we we push the luminosity um, quite high you know we've lifted up these darker areas much brighter and you're going to see color shifts when you do either of um, these things of brightening or darkening so what you can do you can come down and you want to choose uh, a selective uh, not selective sorry hue saturation adjustment and I'm just going to uh, clip this so I'm holding down the option key clip this into my layer my dodge layer and now I can just reduce the saturation because that's all that happens when I dodge and increase the luminosity the saturation increases yeah. and some people mistakenly change the dodge layer to luminosity blending mode which 
oh, which picks yes. out all of the color. But the problem, yes. the problem with that, you should have color. There should be color shifts. They're just you just don't want distracting color shifts. You know, the human skin tones, there, there are millions and millions of different shades, colors, hues going on. And if you start to flatten out, you know, areas like that with just removing all of the color, you again start to get fake looking images. So yeah. here in her, her forehead, I would that's where I would use the cleaning. So I would go and use the clone stamp tool here to remove these creases. So if I go to my background layer and I will select my clone stamp tool, and I can either choose um, a different blending mode. I could use the lighten blending mode to, if I select near that wrinkle and just go over it, I'm kind of lightening it. I'm, I'm adding more light into that area. So I'm just gonna remove it. And we can switch to darken. And now I could kind of go over this area. Um, now I don't, the darken and the lighten modes um, are, they help because you are really targeting that certain area. You know, you're lightening something or you're darkening it. If you use the normal blending mode, you have to be very careful about what you're brushing over. Um, yeah. I so, And let me just check this. I want to set my hardness to zero. And um, let me just check. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to set my hardness to 100 because I want to make sure that no edges are being blurred together. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah. that's maybe, I was wondering um, why it didn't look as correct as I'd like, because hardness should be, everything should always be with texture. You want it to be maintained as much as possible. So that's why I will always try and uh, keep as much of the texture as I can. Yes, that's, I mean, it's all so interesting. I think it's a lot to take in for people, but I think it's a technique that everyone can try every kind of photography, even if it's product photography, it's basically changing the light in your photos and like controlling the light a little bit more. So I think it's something everyone can try. And I wish I could talk to you so much more, but we only have half an hour, but <laughs> I encourage everyone to check out Zoe's YouTube tutorials, go to her website, go to her education site. I think you have a newsletter, if I'm not wrong, that people can sign up to. Right. So um, sign up to her newsletter. Um, thank you so much, Zoe, for joining me this week. It was lovely having you. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. And next week, uh, we won't have a stream because next week is Adobe Max. It's free this year. So sign up now. There's a lot of cool things coming. And if I'm not completely wrong, we have a clip of Adobe Max coming up for you now. And we also have another live stream coming right after this. So stick around and I see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.